CRINS, which stands for the Child Rights International Network, uh, is a creative think tank working on human rights with a focus on children and young people. One of the thematic area that we work on is the relationships between the rights of children and environmental degradation, including the impact of toxic chemicals on children. So in this presentation, I'd like to um, set the international scene um, and I will be referring to the work that has been done um, by Bashkut Tutkak, uh, former Special Rapporteur on Toxics and Human Rights, to demonstrate that this is a children's rights issue and uh, that this perspective could be of good use for uh, European actors to make the change happen. Um, so just to mention that the illustration in this presentation, thank you, Sandra, for putting that, putting that up, are from Miriam Sugranis, who is Queen Art Director and Illustrator. Next slide, please. So first, looking at the health impact of such exposure on children as recognized as the international level. We are all exposed to toxic substances daily, including in our, in our neighborhood as just demonstrated by the excellent study that uh, was presented. All humans are vulnerable to the effects of, toxic to, of exposure to toxics, but children are the worst affected population group because of their smaller body, um, their rapid growth, and also uh, particular behavioral habits. So two main reports coming from special rapporteur at the UN have looked at the health impact of exposure, making the links with human rights and more particularly children's rights. First of all, the, the report of the special rapporteur on the right to food, which was dedicated to pesticides in 2017. Um, it's, it's, it's clearly stressed that children are most vulnerable to pesticide contamination as their organs are still developing and owing to their smaller size, they are exposed to a higher dose per unit of body weight. Health impacts linked to childhood exposure to pesticide include impaired intellectual development, adverse behavioral effects and other developmental abnormalities. The reports also mention emerging research that reveals that exposure to even low levels of pesticides, for example, through wind drift or residues on food, uh, may be very damaging to children's health. The same report also identifies pregnant women as particularly at risk and um, and recent evidence even suggests that pesticide exposure by pregnant mothers lead to higher risk of childhood leukemia or other cancers, autism and re respiratory illnesses. Second report that I wanted to talk about is Bashkut's report, uh, the 2016 report to the Human Rights Council, which was dedicated to the, the exposure of to, to toxic of children. In this report, there is, um, the, the, the rapporteur was um, showing that exposure starts before birth through the mother's own exposure, leading to what research, researchers describe as pre-polluted children. He also refers to a silent pandemic when talking about the impact of pollution and contamination on children's health. Finally, just to mention here, the report also refers to the international impact of pesticides being passed down from one generation to the next. And next slide, please. Um, I, I'd like here to, to look at the rights that are that being affected by exposure. So under the Convention on the Right of the Child, uh, children are entitled to uh, live, learn and grow in a physical environment that facilitates health, play and education and is free from undue risk. A wide range of children's rights are being affected by exposure to toxics. There is a right to life, the right to health, the right to play, to education, to information. In his report, uh, the, the former UN Special Rapporteur also referred to the right to physical and mental integrity which is the right of a person to participate in and make decisions about his own body. He explained that non-consensual physical or mental intrusion against the body constitutes a human rights violation. According to the special rapporteur, human exposure to toxics constitutes such intrusion, whether this is acute poisoning or low level exposure to toxic substances. 
Another right highlighted by the special reporter is child, children's right to be heard, which means that every child capable of form, forming his or her own views has a right to be heard and to influence decision-making processes that may be relevant in his or her life. This right is closely linked with the question of consent and with the phenomenon of children being born pre-polluted, as I was referring previously. According to the special rapporteur, states must prevent childhood exposure in recognition of the right of present and future generations to be heard. So in application of the UN framework, the Convention of the Right of the Child, states have a legal obligation to protect children from exposure to toxics. States need to prioritize the best interest of the child when designing environmental and public health norms and ensure access to information and effective remedies. Businesses also have a responsibility to ensure that their activities do not violate human rights. Next slide, please. Um, these rights and obligations that I just presented have been stressed in recent UN reports uh, and UN uh, resolutions, so in different UN developments. I, I, I just uh, point a few here, which are um, the 2020 report by the Office of the High Commissioner for Human Rights, um, which was dedicated on the realization of children's rights through a healthy environment. This report looked specifically at childhood uh, exposure to toxic and uh, chemical, including uh, endocrine disruptors, and stressed the importance of adopting a prevention as a primary approach. Same in the, in the Human Rights Council resolution uh, that was adapted in September 2020 on the same topic. It also refer and stress the need to adopt a preventive and precautionary approach uh, it urges states to, to identify and eliminate sources of exposure of children, including endocrine disruptive chemicals. Um, just a quick mention on the current call for global recognition at the UN level of the right to a clean, healthy and sustainable environment, which might happen uh, in the next year, uh, and which could contribute to making these obligations even stronger. Next slide. Just want to finish this presentation to make some links with the EU framework that is of interest in this event and to draw potential synergies with children's rights. So as you know, um, and uh, um, just mentioning here the EU strategy that has just been uh, adopted a couple of months ago on the rights of the child. Uh, and I know that Mrs. Abraham will uh, elaborate in a minute on this strategy. So I think this strategy is a great opportunity to ensure that the mainstreaming of children's rights in all relevant policies at the EU level, including on chemicals. Um, it's, uh, so I refer here to a couple of, of um, strategies and plans that interaction uh, and, uh, can be make, made. Uh, I think that's it. Uh, just a last, um, very last slide please, uh, to thank you for your attention. Um, and if you want to read more about Queen's work on this issue, you can consult our website. And uh, you may also want to visit the full online art exhibition that I, uh, because I only selected a couple of pieces uh, to illustrate this um, presentation, uh, but it is available online. Um, I thank you for your attention. <laughs>